Thank you for taking the time to consider this topic with an open mind. If you open your mind too much, your brain will fall out. In order to comprehend that you're about to see, you'll need to consider that you may have been lied to your entire life by everyone you know, all of them, unwittingly participating in the greatest deception of all time. I fully realize that when you first heard the topic, or possibly even right now, you think that I'm some kind of raving lunatic with an obvious mental problem or some dark ulterior agenda. You probably think that I can be proven wrong with a flick of your finger. I know you're thinking this because a few months ago, a friend of mine mentioned the Flat Earth Conspiracy, and I literally chuckled aloud saying, what an idiot, and me and my friend had a nice little laugh about how gullible these people must be. And honestly, I didn't give the notion a second thought. Until last week. Last week, I was watching some YouTube videos and decided to have a look at the Flat Earth Conspiracy idiots. To be completely honest, the only reason I looked at it was because of the little chuckle my friend and I had several months ago. If that conversation hadn't taken place, I honestly wouldn't have taken the time to click on the video link that day. Again, that was last week. So, I decided to have a look at what these kooks were ranting on about, so I could destroy their argument with simple common sense in the comments section. And possibly make a video about how retarded these flat earthers were. probably trying to get attention and steer honest people away from the important topics. I'll tell you that some of the flat earth information could fall into this category. Nonsense. However, when I began to look at the Flat Earth Theory, I had all these preconceived notions about falling off the edge and the laws of gravity and the beautiful planets in the night sky and everything else that comes to mind when pondering our world's place in the universe. I thought about theoretical physicists like Einstein, Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
That smart guy must be way too busy to debunk this nonsense. When I continued considering the evidence I was looking at, I honestly wrote off any valid points. As a strange coincidence that could easily be explained because I knew for a fact that the Earth isn't flat. Now, we need to start from the beginning. When you think of a word or a concept, or if you're pondering or imagining things as most people do when they have a break at work, sometimes at work, your mind's eye is a very literal statement, just like imagine or image in. Your pineal gland has all the same nerves and basic functionality as your real eyeball. The difference between your real eye and your mind's eye is that your pineal gland doesn't use light to base its image rendering, but rather a more obscure source which is essentially self-generated by you along with the visual experiences you've had related to the topic you may now be pondering in your mind's eye. Now. The advertisers of the world have made it their life's mission and full-time job to take advantage of your mind's eye from as early on as possible. Books, cartoons, documentaries, and of course advertisements are all designed to form associations between certain ideas and images in your mind's eye. Advertisers are very good at this and they're targeting younger and younger people in order to manipulate our collective mind's eye with the goal of varying degrees of control of what we associate with the picture in our mind. Ultimately, advertisements use very deep psychology to lead us towards buying more of their stuff. And their stuff can be anything from soda pop to the fact that man has set foot on the moon, even played golf on the moon. A quote from Edward Bernays. It's no secret that our tax dollars have funded programs like NASA to the tune of countless billions, probably even trillions of dollars over the decades since NASA was created. If you're not familiar with the Nazi origins of NASA, make no mistake, NASA has had the ability, means, motive, opportunity, and callousness to mold our collective mind's eye into firmly believing in a false picture of our reality. In order for you to understand the information you're going to look at, you'll need to try and suspend your mind's image of the following words. One concept I'd like you to imagine firmly as possible is a globe spinning at a thousand miles per hour at its equator.
However, try not to associate this concept with our world. Might not be possible at this point. I realize you don't have a lot of motivation to research this topic. As a major part of your intelligence is telling you to dismiss what I'm telling you and go on about your business. That's fine if you do, but just know that you are very close to understanding the truth. I'm going to give you an example of how the current accepted model of our world simply does not stack up with reality. I'll try to illustrate the point to the best of my ability, but please make sure to put on your thinking cap. Question. How can a commercial flight, which averages about 500 miles per hour, from New York to LA, have an identical duration with a flight from LA to New York? If you think about this, logically, a commercial flight going 500 miles per hour could not possibly fly from L.A. to New York. And I will try to explain the logic with an analogy, then apply the analogy to the flight times conundrum, so that you might understand how this equates to verifiable irrefutable proof that our world is not a spinning globe. If you've ever driven down the highway, you most certainly know that it's much more difficult to pass a car that's traveling in the same direction as opposed to a car that's coming towards you at 65 miles per hour. The way you figure out how fast a car is going in relation to your car is to add the speeds together. So. If you're doing 65 and the car on the other side of the freeway is also doing 65, your relative difference in speed is going to be 130 miles per hour. Zoom! Now, on the other hand, the car on your right, the grandma doing 64, well, you'll pass by her at one mile per hour since you're doing 65. Since you're both moving in the same direction, we must subtract the two speeds to get your relative difference in speed. So, if the grandma car on your right doing 64 suddenly accelerates to twice your speed, or 130 miles per hour, you're never going to pass grandma as long as you continue doing 65. Keep this in mind. Now, back to the planes. So, the plane leaving New York headed west to LA takes off, and according to the globe model, the plane should actually enjoy a very fast flight to LA as the plane is doing 500 miles per hour, but the destination should also be racing towards the plane at 1,000 miles per hour. 
So, just like the car on the other side of the freeway, in order to get the relative difference in speed between the two, we add the two speeds, so this equals 1,500 miles per hour. Now, on the return flight, keep in mind, the plane can only do 500 miles per hour. It might keep up with the Earth spinning at 1,000 miles per hour for some short duration, but at some point, the destination would begin to get further and further away at a rate of 500 miles per hour. Now remember, just like the grandma on the highway, we need to subtract the two speeds to figure out the relative difference in speed. So 1,000 miles per hour, the Earth spinning east, and 500 miles per hour, the plane also going east. Since they're traveling in the same direction, the Earth would be going 500 miles per hour faster than the plane. The plane would never catch New York. If you can understand this basic logic, you have just proven, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that our planet is not spinning. You can imagine a time not that long ago, scientists were debating the spinning globe theory, which was a relatively new and hotly debated concept. Most of the scientific community laughed in the faces of this new theory as everyone knew the Earth was not a spinning globe. So, we're in a room with two scientists debating the new globe theory. Based on my calculations, I assert that the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour near the equator. How do you know the Earth is spinning? Look at the stars. 
stars, mate. The Earth must be spinning to cause the apparent movement in the stars. How in the hell can the Earth be spinning at around a thousand miles per hour if we don't just fly off the bloody planet at a thousand miles per hour? Well, here's how it works, mate. Since the Earth is so big, even though space is a vacuum, the Earth sort of pushes away at all the nothingness of space. But the nothing of, of space, like, pushes back. You're trying to tell me that nothing is pushing down upon me with perfect amount of force in order to negate the perfect balance, the weight of the planet pushing up on my feet at a thousand miles per hour? And what are the odds that our planet is spinning in the perfect speed to account for the exact amount of gravity that's pushing down on my feet in perfect balance with the Earth rotating an arbitrary 1,000 miles per hour? I don't know the odds of that happening, but I think the Earth is a globe, so it makes sense to me. can understand this basic flaw in gravity, you have just proved that our world is not a spinning globe. Some people will say, but we've circumnavigated or sailed around the globe. Well, we've sailed around all right, but not around the globe. Most of the people who claim to know that the Earth isn't flat have never considered the true, correct, flat Earth model. Our corporate owners have programmed us to instantly assume, like a knee-jerk reaction, that any person claiming that our world is flat must be some type of raving lunatic with no understanding of science. Your mind's eye will come up with all sorts of factual data to reassure yourself that our world is a globe spinning around the sun in the Milky Way galaxy hurling through space. Believe me when I tell you
the person in this conversation with major delusions is the one who believes our world is a globe hurling through space. I'm not calling you crazy. But you have been fooled. The North Pole certainly attracts a compass needle towards the North. However, if you look at the flat earth model, you'll realize that you can sail around in a giant flat circle, keep the needle pointed to the right, and simply head west. You'll see the false globe model has cleverly taken control of how you view the world so at this point, it still may be difficult for you to understand what I'm telling you. But it is the honest, verifiable, 100% truth. The painful truth is, without considering for a moment that our world is not a spinning globe, you will never be able to review the real facts and subsequently weigh them logically in both models. This means you cannot come to a rational, logical conclusion until you consider that you have been lied to I can attest to you that in the last week I have taken the time to consider both models and have come to the definite, doubtless, indisputable conclusion that the globe is a hoax. There are lots of problems that people need to understand in their own personal mind's eye in order to know for certain that I'm not just pulling your leg or that the alternate correct model actually works. I'm going to try and cover a couple of arguments that I've heard people try to use in order to perpetuate or justify the globe image in their mind's eye. When they do this, people are really just trying to understand how the flat earth model works. And I can tell you that I've studied both models and can assert again with full certainty the flat earth model is perfectly sound and logical and answers all of the questions left hanging around with the globe theory.
I should tell you, nothing in your life is going to change when you do finally realize the truth. Ships are not going to start falling off the edge of the earth if they go too far, and your GPS is still going to work. The only thing that might change in your life at first, if you're like me, you might sleep a little better at night, knowing deep down inside that the planet you're on is completely stationary, just as it seems, and all the celestial bodies we can see in the night sky are rotating around the magnetic center, also known as the North Pole, just as they seem. How is this so hard to understand? I mean, seriously, how can this be so... How stupid do you have to be to not understand?